He cares about me. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you uh, for the excitement for your word, that we're here to meet with you. Lord, we're here to meet with you. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would come now, that you would enter into this room in a, in a new way. We know you live within us, but we're asking you to come to walk among us. Holy Spirit, reveal to us the heart of the Father. Reveal to us more his heart. We want to see him rightly. We don't want to see him the way we think or others think. We want to see the Lord the way you say he is, the way he says he is. Thank you, Lord. We just lay aside all distractions, all heaviness. We shake it off in the name of Jesus. We take on peace. We take on the mind of Christ. We think his thoughts. We don't walk in the understanding of the flesh. We walk in the understanding of the Holy Spirit within. Holy Spirit, reveal more truth to us today. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Awesome. So <clears throat> it's really funny because I was sharing with um, my friend Eva just the other day I, before I taught last week. I said, yeah, I'd come up with my message and put it together. Did I tell you all this last week? And then like I, I was going over it. And I'm like, this isn't right. And I said, Evan, I only have one message. <laughs> So I need to get with Jesus on this. And he had, he had uh, moved it and changed it. Well, same thing happened this week. For, I am a very, um, I, I'm more of a teacher. Like I like to teach verse, scripture, pool and stuff. But the Lord has kind of changed that in me over the last couple years. And I do teach, but then I also feel like the Lord has me sharing more Um just experiences and things like that that he's taught me. But I really wanted to go through John 15 verse by verse because that's what you do. And so I was doing it and it just was like, oh, this isn't right. So we went back again and, and the Lord told me again, remember what I shared with you all last week? He said to me, tell them I love them. Tell them how good I am. I'm like, God, I did that. He's like, no, keep, keep. <laughs> I did it. No, no, keep going, keep going. So I really feel like we're going to sit on that theme for a few weeks, not all the whole entire class. Of course, it will be part of the whole class the whole time, but just a real focused time. Um, so we're going to go to John 15, 4 and 5 again. This is what we went over um, last week. And we're going to um, go some different places. I'm actually really excited. We're going to talk about Mary of Bethany. She's like one of my favoriteest people ever to talk about, besides Jesus. Um, she's awesome. So John 15, 4 through 5. And you guys can see, if you didn't get the notes, I have notes. You can see I have tons of verses. But uh, if you're wanting to, um, put them, of course, in your own. Can you pass that back? Does anyone else need notes? Um, so you can, you can write them however you want to. I had to make the font a little smaller this time to fit them all on one page. But um, lots of the word. The word brings life, right? Yes. The word brings life. The word brings truth. Can you pass that? Thanks. Um, and that's what we want. We want truth. We don't want to. I love to tell the stories that make me cry and make you all cry. I, I do. I love them. I, I do. I love to tell those stories, but I do not want us just being emotional over the word of God. I want us to be concrete and solid that we know that we know that we know this is true. Even on our worst day that we're like, I know God, you're good. So Jesus is teaching the disciples. I told you guys last week that this was his last sermon before the last supper. That was not true. Actually, they had had the last supper and they were walking to the garden of Gethsemane. And this is when he taught this. It's kind of just a cool thought. You know, he's already had the last supper. He already knows Judas is on his way to betray him. This is not new news to Jesus. He's walking along and he shares this with his friends. 
with his disciples. He, his heart is to share things with us. He has things to tell us. He has things to tell us about ourselves. He has things to tell us about our people. He has things to tell us about our situation. And he has things to tell us about himself. That he wants to share the things with us. So it's so cool. He says, abide in me and I in you. And we took that verse and we just simply said, it's more than this. But if you were just to look at it in its most basic form, talk to me and I'll talk to you. He's telling them to stay connected. Right. Now we know that he's going away. They don't quite have that revelation yet. Okay. So he's trying to prepare them. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He's making this very clear. Guys, get this picture. You're connected to me. And as long as you stay connected to me, you can bear fruit. But if you don't, you won't. This is just, we've got to settle this thing. This isn't about us coming up with a really creative idea how to get somebody to behave themselves or get somebody to act right or get somebody to think we're good. You know, there's times when we have conflict with people and we just want to, no, 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 that's not what I meant. And that's not what I, yeah, and no, that's not our job. It really isn't our job. Our job is to stay connected to the vine. And when we stay connected to the vine and we talk to him and we let him talk to us and then we act on what he says, then we're going to bear fruit. He goes on and says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, here comes the promise, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I love seeing that as a promise. Okay, God, I really want good fruit here. So if I want good fruit here, I have to abide in you. I have to settle myself down. I have to turn my brain off here for a second. And I have to ask, Lord, what are you saying about this? I need to hear your voice. I need to follow what you're leading, guiding, and directing me to do. Otherwise, we just get ourselves in a mess that we have to go to him and, and even ask for more help, right? Jesus wants us to abide with him. Let's go to Luke 10, verse 38. <clears throat> We're going to talk about Mary and Bethany. Like I said, I love to talk about Mary and Bethany. Yeah, yeah. I, have a, I heard the most incredible thing this week when you were talking about staying connected. Um, it, was a teach, it was a teaching on... You know, if you're camping and you've got a campfire and you're close to that fire and it's so warm and you can cook your food on it, and make marshmallows, whatever. Yeah. And you start stepping away. Maybe you have to go to the bathroom, so you step mm -hmm. into the woods. You start hearing noises and mm. all this stuff in your brain and your head and all this stuff. And then you realize you've got to get close to the fire <laughs> That's where good. it's warm and safe. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so much what we're learning because mm -hmm. it's... It's so true. It's we get into our head really and we good. step away from yeah. the fire. We got to stay close to that fire. And I just saw That's Jesus good. I like that. that. I like that. And that's such a good picture of we walk throughout our day and we have these emotions and we have these thoughts yes. that come up. And we really need to become very aware of um, those emotions that are negative, they're not of God. And the thoughts <clears throat> that don't line up with the word. And it's kind of like a, a little alarm that goes off that says you're not abiding. You're, you're not connected. You're, you're leaning to your own understanding. You're listening to the voice of the flesh over the voice of the Father. We really need to see those as, man, I can get myself worked up like that. You know, like in a frenzy like that over something that's big enough. And I need to just stop and be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, this is the truth.
hey, Lord, what do you say about this? And we reconnect just as quickly. Yeah, Mom? And it says that Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Ghost and fire. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Fire. Speaking of fire, fire, Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Ghost and fire. The Holy yeah. Spirit is our helper. Wow. He is the one that was given to us <laughs> to fire. stay connected. We do not stay connected by trying harder. That's actually disconnecting. We stay connected by asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me hear the voice of the Lord. Help me hear your voice. Empower me. Help me to settle down here. Help me, Holy Spirit, should be one of our regular prayers. Teach me, Holy Spirit, how to walk out in this. Yes? Um, just as another thing on that thing about fire, um, Ellie Hahn did a teaching several years ago mm -hmm. on the fire um, from the scripture of praying for our enemies and how mm -hmm. it keeps fire mm -hmm. it keeps yeah fire yeah 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 heads. and she talked about it from their perspective in this country where fire is practically extremely very important mm -hmm. because it does provide protection from the wild animals it provides Heat, for heat the home. cooking, it provides light in their light, homes, yeah. and it also it's provides the ability to cook food mm -hmm. and create increased nourishment for their family. And she said that when we pray for our enemies, mm. uh, we are actually giving them the opportunity to have that fire come into their home mm -hmm. so That's that they good. don't have to be afraid, which makes it not so likely for them to be my yeah. enemy anymore. Yes. That's what causes them to be my enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's huge where we're saying, Holy Spirit, move here. Stay connected to the vine. Because when we disconnect the vine, we get mad, we get irritated, and we want to curse others. We don't see it as that, but that is what we're doing. Even if what we are saying are facts, if it's against the heart of God, it is speaking death over their lives. Instead of asking the Holy Spirit to come, to move, to bless. Um, I've had some situations just recently. We bought a, um, another rental home out in Kansas City. And I've had uh, several people out there fixing stuff and not doing a very good job and um, taking advantage of me. And I got ripped off. And I was telling mom about it. She didn't know about this one. And um, I said, so I just asked the Lord, Lord, I give this offering to you. I'm asking you to go after this person. <laughs> Seek them down. Get a hold of them. Show yourself to them and capture them with your love. That's I can either be mad and I couldn't curse them or I can say, okay, father, I ask for your fire upon them. I'm asking you. And that does not come because I'm super sweet and super just, oh, I just am. This is choices we make. We make choices despite how we feel. We go, okay, Lord, I'm asking you send your goodness. And that's when we're connected to the vine. We don't do that just by trying to be nice. So love Mary and Bethany, Luke 10, 38, right? Luke 10, 38. Mary of Bethany is awesome. We're only going to read one of her stories today. But Mary of Bethany, um, when you read about her, you see her at the feet of Jesus. I've always said there's three places where she's at his feet. But a couple weeks ago, I found a fourth place. And, of course, I got all excited about it. Um, when Lazarus died... She actually ran out to Jesus and fell at his feet. So Mary's awesome. <clears throat> Martha's awesome too, but Martha messes up here, and we're going to see what happens. Um, now it happened that they went, that he entered, as they went, they entered a certain village. The disciples and Jesus are going along, and they enter a certain village. Um, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Right there, she's awesome. She welcomed him into her home. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus are siblings. And they are friends of Jesus. I love these people so much because they're not his disciples, as in they were called to follow Jesus, but they're his friends. They welcome him into their home. And it says 
that she had a sister, speaking of Martha, had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the feet, at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, this position that Mary takes over and over and over again is to hear the word of the Lord. She wants to hear what Jesus has to share. She knows his heart. Now, in this situation, Martha is walking out in the norm of society in that day and age. The day and age would be the men come in, they sit to have their little gathering, the women are going to make the food, cook the bread, prepare lunch for them. And she's doing it. Mary, on the other hand, has recognized something. Jesus is in the house, and I want to hear what he has to say. Jesus came to my house today, and he wants to share something, and I will not be running to and fro. I'm going to sit at his feet. I'm going to listen to his voice. I don't care if this isn't what would be considered incorrect in those times. She sits herself at his feet. Now, Martha was distracted with much serving. Martha was not on Facebook, and she wasn't next door <laughs> gossiping. She wasn't texting on the phone, right? She was serving. But it says she was distracted with much serving. Yeah. It was a distraction. At that moment in time, <clears throat> Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him. Now, you got to love Martha. you got to love Martha. One thing that Martha does right here is she actually goes to Jesus and talks to him instead of talks to the other kitchen workers. Why doesn't Mary help me? Jesus should tell Mary now. But she actually goes to Jesus, okay? But it's hilarious. Get this. Remember how I said, make this real? Make this real, you gals. When did we ever go to God and we're like, God, would you please tell so-and-so? to stop that. Do we do that ever? God, do you not even care? That's what she pulls out here. Don't you even care that this is going on? So she goes to Jesus. She says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, I have the answer. <laughs> tell her to help me <laughs> now we're not teaching on this right now but we could just absolutely go everywhere in that whole thing about our hearts our hearts to the Lord I, I really believe Martha loved Jesus but Martha was off here she was correcting Jesus she was telling Jesus Jesus you don't even care and if you did care you would tell her what to do. She was distracted with much serving. There's nothing wrong with serving, but there's something wrong with serving with a wrong heart. Yes. And Martha was serving when she should have been sitting. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. And when you are serving and you should be sitting, you're going to get mad at the people that are sitting. It's so true. Uh -huh. It's like she is frustrated and we can feel her frustration. Uh, years ago, um, we were at this little church up in Greeley, and I remember the pastor's wife. She says, I had to get free of feeling like if I was cleaning the house, everybody else should be cleaning the house too. I have felt that way. Hello? Am I the only one that made dishes for the dinner? You know, we, we can do that, and it's this wrong spirit. It's a wrong spirit. I'm glad that you enjoyed that because isn't it true? This is the second time in two days I've heard that. Oh, well, good, good. So Jesus answers her. Jesus has something to say about the situation. And don't think that Jesus is like Martha, 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 Martha. Jesus has a heart for Martha. Yeah, like he loves Martha. It's his friend. She welcomes him into her home. Jesus loves Martha. And so he's going to bring correction to her. He's going to bring correction to Martha. And he says, Martha, Martha, you're worried and you're troubled about many things. There's the correction. See, when we go to the Lord and we're like, Lord, 
I am just so frustrated here about this, this, and this. I'm exhausted. This is not working out right. <sighs> okay, what do you say? We want to ask him what he says. I, sometimes we already know what he's going to say. But it's like, okay, just, t just tell me. <clears throat> why don't, instead of you huffing and puffing about that guy ripping you off, why don't you give that as an offering to me and pray for his salvation? I love it. That's good. Okay. Let's do that. See, he didn't say, Martha, you're, you're busy and you're serving and you should be sitting. He actually told her what the problem was. You're worried and distracted. You're worried and you're troubled about many things. This is the problem. This is the problem, Martha. But one thing is needed. I love this. We talked about one thing last week with David. I think we're going to bring that verse up again. He says, one thing's needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. He, he in love, he praises Mary. He praises Mary. Do you see what she's doing? This, mm -hmm. this is what should be going on right now. And he brings direction to Martha. Martha, 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 you're all in turmoil. Anyone can relate to that? You're running around in circles. You're not sitting at my feet and listening to my voice. And some people are like, wait, wait, wait. That sounds like, what, are we just supposed to sit at his feet all the time? I am convinced that we can get to a place where we are so connected with the Lord that we have put in the, the time and the dedication, and we're like, Lord, I am serious about this. I want to abide in you. I want to listen to your voice. And there is, those, there is those times you can only go deep when you sit. Mm -hmm. Like I pace, that's my sitting, but you know what I mean? There's, some, there's places that you can only go deep mm -hmm. if you have given the Lord, you're giving the Lord focused time. Mm -hmm. But we can abide on the run. Mm -hmm. And I believe we can mm -hmm. sit at his feet that's on the fair. run. That we can be, because there's things that need to be done and there's things we need to do and we can be going about it and saying, okay, Holy Spirit, I need wisdom about this. I'm asking you to show me what to do here. Lord, I'm asking you to show me this. Give me peace. What are you saying about this? You know, I can be um, coming here. What are you saying about this class today, Lord? What do you want to say? What do you want to do? I can be going to visit somebody. Lord, do you, do you have something for me to, to bless somebody? Caitlin was sharing a story about how she was on her way to the grocery store and she was like, okay, Lord, I want, I want to touch somebody today. Show me somebody to speak life to that we're doing life, but we're connected to the vine. <coughs> this is real. Like this doesn't just teach neat. This is real. This really is what you're called to. This really is what we're called to is to take the father's hand and walk our day out, holding his hand, connected to the vine, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I made some bad decisions when I was contacting different people. And I know it because the fruit was bad. <laughs> that, that didn't take me a lot to figure out, right? Do you need a throat drop? You have one. Okay, because I do too. Um, and, uh, and I just simply said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't stop to ask you. So now I am. What do I do to fix this situation? What do I do? What direction do I take to fix this situation? That's good. And I felt like he was leading me. It's okay to miss it. It's not okay to justify it. It's not okay to sit there and, and just say, oh, wow, I ran out ahead of you. Sorry. Okay, Lord, what are you saying? What do you say about this? Because um, he has good things to say. So see this. He wants us to sit at his feet. Yes. Um, when you said that, that the Lord is correcting Martha. Yeah. Then you said direction. I think that loving direction is a better feel than correction. Mm. Especially for it people. is a better feel. It's still correction. Though. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people have been corrected 
mm. unlovingly. Mm -hmm. word? Yeah. yeah. And correction <laughs> brings up a kind of a where our father, where Jesus yeah. is a loving mm -hmm. director. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's a loving Absolutely. director. Absolutely. You know, it is correction, but it's a more of, and you use the word direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. Yeah. But it's more of a loving direction because he loves us and he wants us to do, he's for us. Mm -hmm. him, whereas mm -hmm. a lot of people that have corrected us are not no. for us. And, <laughs> and I think <laughs> lots of times we cop an attitude about correction. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, it still has the same result. You want yeah. to do this right? Yeah. You better be willing to go to the Father and say, "What? Right. What? Where did I miss it? Right. Like I really right. want to know." We live in a world which has also invaded the church. That we want to pass blame. We want to say, "Well, you know, I did the best I could," and you know what? And it's okay. It's okay. Guess what? You're flesh. You're human. You will make mistakes. What's not okay is to not go to the Lord, but to just justify, 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 mm -hmm. instead of going to the Lord and saying, Lord, it's true. I need you to I come. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know I don't argue with my mama. <laughs> Because I, I just redirect, just redirect. Right. I get, I get, yes, I was going to say, I get, I get irritated at my GPS when she's like, hey, take the next U-turn. And I'm like, you could have said that nicer, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay if we're wrong. Oh, yeah. it is. It is. What's not okay is to stay fixed yeah. in that wrong instead of going to the Lord and saying, man, Lord, I, I know they were not in the right. I know they weren't in the right. I know they weren't in the right, but that doesn't give me the right exactly. to act this way. Yeah. Holy Spirit, come teach me. Move my heart. Make those adjustments that need to be made. Direct my heart into your love. 1 John 3, 1. We talked about this um, last week. And I love it. So we're going to talk about it again. Behold. Oh, I love this so much. And I don't know if we talked about this this much last week. Behold what manner. Behold in manner. Behold. Look at it. On purpose. You guys get what I just said? On purpose, look, look, behold, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Awesome. Behold, mm -hmm. okay, get this, behold, look on purpose, what manner, what degree, what type. There's this unconditional love. There's this extravagant love. There's this generous love, this tender love, and unchanging love. Behold what manner. What manner, what type. It's not just God loves us. He loves us fervently, unconditionally, with, with an overflowing heart. Behold it. Look at it on purpose. On purpose that you look and you see the love of God. Um, right as I was saying that, it reminded me of about four or five years ago, um, while I was just starting down this journey of just really uh, focusing on God's goodness, His kindness, I had um, gone, uh, gone to the healing rooms. It was actually the very first time I visited the healing rooms. Um, I was just checking it out. And I had a couple of gals that gave me a word and it was about the call of God on my life to preach about his, to teach about his love. And, um, it was cool. I had written it down. I was like, yeah, I love God's love. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. But my husband, Fred, that same week said, I got this picture of you the other day, Carrie, and you were standing in front of the Grand Canyon, which he actually has hiked twice. So he knows the Grand Canyon. And so he said, I, you were standing in front of the Grand Canyon and you were giving a tour. And you were like, there's his unconditional love. And there's his never ending love. And there is his, see, it's a Grand Canyon. 
This is a Grand Canyon of his love. And there's all these aspects of his love, but everything he does, everything is out of love. So when we get offended at somebody correcting us, usually we're offended because we don't see the heart. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Okay? Well, sometimes we do, and we don't like that heart. It's true, and it's not the right heart. But when we're seeing our Father, when we're looking at our Father, when we're beholding what manner of love that He has bestowed upon us, that He's like, hey, I want you to be my daughter. You're, you're my daughter. That's excellent. You're my daughter. You're the daughter of the King. It's this, it's this on purpose we look, on purpose we focus. Did you have something to say, Pat? Yeah, I was going to say, I felt like the Lord said to me, and if you love those who love you, what reward do you yeah. have? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, when I'm in you know, I'm always uh, analyzing everybody, do they like me or not, you know, and, which is wrong, of course. But uh, so I want to say, then, when I have to do that, then I have to and that changed it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's so good. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm going to share a little bit out of this book. Um, I had mentioned it, Dennis and Jennifer Clark. It's called The 60 Day Challenge. Um, they write many books and. Um, you know how God gives different people messages, and they all kind of fall into that same vein? Um, but they're, they're definitely, their vein is um, learning to connect with the Lord, spirit to spirit, getting out of your head, getting down to your spirit, man. I want to read this from their book. It's what they call simple prayer. And he talks about simple prayer, what he ca- calls simple prayer, not as the only type of prayer, There's all different types of prayer, as we well know. But this type that he's talking about is more what I'm talking about in this class. Like sitting at your table for two, listening to his voice, connecting with his heart. That's not the only kind of prayer that we do. This morning, I had to tell the devil, no, you don't get our stuff. You don't get my peace in the name of Jesus. Then I spoke the truth of God's word to my heart filling up the truth of God's word, I was not sitting and just having a sweet, loving conversation. I was doing stuff that I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, you do this now. And so I did. And um, so I don't want you guys to get confused and I'm saying, hey, we're doing this whole thing wrong and we're not really supposed to have any kind of spiritual warfare or anything like that. I'm just saying that this is the groundwork. Literally, this is the foundation is us connecting with the heart of the Father, knowing His love for us, knowing how to actually sit and listen to His voice. I wonder how many people don't realize how much they could be in tune with the voice of God because they've never taken time to settle themselves down and learn how to hear His voice. That's and true. learn how to quiet yourself down. I don't know if you know any of these people, because I can sometimes be this person, but like you're talking to them and you're pretty sure they didn't hear anything you said mm-hmm. most of the time when you have a conversation with them. It's kind of like a little kid, right? Mm-hmm. The little kid, I mean, we lecture. I used to lecture my kids all the time. And I'm like, and the Lord's like, really? Do you really think like it, they're getting like any of that? And, and so we do that because why? They don't have the capacity to really. And sometimes that's us. We just haven't developed the capacity to hear. That's good. What did don't you? you think that sometimes resting and quietness is some of the most powerful warfare? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Just absolutely settling ourselves mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. and just being, okay, God, come in with your peace. So I'm going to read this from their book. Um, simple prayer is prayer focused on adoring and glorifying God alone. It's, it's one of the hardest things to do is to go to the Lord and for longer than 15 or longer than five minutes, just talk to him about him. Because usually, even when we purpose to do that, God, you're so good. You're faithful. 
Just thank you for your goodness, Lord. Now I'm asking you, go visit so-and-so with that goodness right now. I mean, we just flop over into that all the time, all the time. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying that this, this really settling down and really going, God, I just came here to tell you you're good. That's good. That I really Mm -hmm. am thankful Mm -hmm. that I'm your daughter. Yeah. And so often that's foreign in our lives. Simple prayer is prayer focused on adoring and glorifying God alone. It is based in the simplicity of a life-giving relationship with the Lord. We spend time with him and he imparts life to us. That's real. Like that really happens. We spend time to him. And he imparts life to us. That simple whole verse, be still. Be still. Settle down. Be still. Yeah. Yeah. Simple prayer, therefore, is simply being in the presence of Jesus. Come into the presence of the Lord expecting to meet with him, spirit to spirit. Present your time as an offering to him. Present yourself to him and yield your will. My will wants to, I like to take care of things in now. Man, I cannot get on the computer in the morning on emails because I'm like, oh, I got to take care of that now. And it's this yielding your will. God, right now, right now, right now, I settle down. I yield my will to you. I want to hear your voice. Drop down to your spirit. So they talk about that in in multiple places where they're like, get out of your head. This is not a head relationship with the Lord. We renew our mind with the truth, but this is what happens when we renew our mind with the truth. It drops down to our spirit, man, and it causes confidence in us. That he really is who he says he is. He really does have a good plan. Present your time as an offering to him. Present yourself to the Lord and yield your will. Drop down to your spirit and open the door of your heart to welcome his spirit. Seek God for himself alone and make relationship with him your top priority. Number one, I want to know him and be known by him. Number one, I want to abide with him and have him abide in me. He goes on just a little bit more. Perhaps the way we describe simple prayer would be communion with God. Prayer is a relationship with a person. The communion we experience in our time of prayer doesn't have to end as though we go in and out of prayer. We can learn to maintain our connection with the Lord throughout the day. And then he goes on and talks about uh, John 15, abide in the vine. It's real. That's a real place. It's a real relationship. It's a real, it, it's kind of like, you know, if somebody grows up in a real dysfunctional home and um, then they actually come in to your house. Uh, it just reminds me, Christina had a friend that grew up with just a mom, no connection with a dad at all. And their house was a bit dysfunctional. She was an only child, just a mom. And there was just dysfunctional stuff. And she came home with Christina um, for an extended time, like a week, a little over a week. And uh, when they were driving back to Kansas City, there was a group of them that had come. She said, "Uh, it was so good for me to be in your home and see your mom and dad together. Because I didn't ever know that's the way it's supposed to look. That's what happens a lot is we go through our Christian life and we go, we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to read the word. We're supposed to do good things. We're supposed to serve, 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 and then serve some more. This is what we're supposed to do. And the Lord says, no, 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 no. You're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be my daughter. You're the one that I love. You're the one. Jesus is like, you're the one I died for. I died so you could be with me, so we could be in relationship with one another. And out of that relationship comes the fruit. It comes the productivity. Exodus 33, 18 through 19. 
You got questions? Let's ask them, okay? Harry, yeah. This whole thing of being foreign, so mm -hmm. sitting in his presence, yeah. so that he imparts life, that's what I think of when I think of Martha was it was foreign to her, this idea mm. to have a group of men meeting and speaking yeah. in the home and for mm. her to come and invade that space and that yeah. time yeah. and mm. that discussion. Yeah. That was so foreign mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. But her sister wanted life. Yeah. And so she was getting the impartation from, from Jesus. And that's how easy we miss it sometimes. It, it's that. kind of like not even an option on our radar. Like we don't even think. I, I was reading in... Yeah, in Rules and regulations, yeah, right? and, and we don't we don't even realize yeah. that though we don't even realize. Yeah. And I was I was reading this book, and he's like, just turn everything off, and just sit, and and don't even talk for a little bit, and just. And I'm like, what? 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 I need worship music. What do you mean? Don't talk. I have to at least whisper. Like literally, I'm like, what is happening? My world is like, what are you saying? Seriously. I'm like, I teach people, use your mouth. Don't just do it in your mind. I mean, I tell people that all the time. We have power in this mouth. And then I realize, oh, no, no, no. This isn't talking about taking authority. This isn't talking about declaring the word. This is talking about communing with the Father. That's right. Oh, man. Foreign. Like, I think I made it five minutes. I'm like, oh, I got to put on some, like, little, like, at least Julie True, like, nice little soaking music, something, something. And it's just what we're not used to, but we need to get it. Yeah. I grew up in a household that was quiet. And my dad more than once would say, if you have noise going on, the enemy is distracting you from hearing the Lord's yeah. voice. And that's their point here. Yeah. It's he stillness. He carried it on to mm. deathbed scenes. Wow. Where someone is drugged up, they can't hear the Lord's voice. Mm -hmm. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. And now we can... Now we have to be careful we don't run over kids that are crossing the street because their ears are plugged up and their eyes are on it's their phone. It's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. They constantly have something going mm -hmm. on in mm -hmm. their head. So if we're in that position, maybe we need to detox. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. 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 Settle down. Settle down. Did you have something? I was just thinking too that because I have a gift of hospitality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I yes, think I think um, I'm does. sure that Martha did. Yes. And sometimes we can confuse our gift with our relationship with Jesus, yeah. mm -hmm. and so we get really busy. Yeah. yeah. People, I've got to do this. I've got to take care of that person. That person needs yeah. a drink, yeah. or that person's yeah. hungry, or, and mm -hmm. so we can con um, confuse our gifting or our calling sometimes. Our doing, in other words, yeah. Our doing with. Totally, yeah. totally, yeah. and uh, this was, yeah, 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 I've shared this, I just shared this on, it's that it needs to be done, it's that it's who I am, it becomes, and I actually, I actually really believe, if we're going to be real with our hearts and with the Lord, I actually believe a lot of our activity is a distraction on purpose. Like we're distracting ourselves from really dealing with heart issues or distracting ourselves from really having to be real with the Lord and go through the uncomfortableness of just sitting before him and hearing his voice and, and you know, all that stuff. But if I'm doing stuff for him, it counts, right? And it's like, wow, I had shared this last uh, Wednesday at, at life. Um, our life group, uh, and I've, I know some of you have heard me say this before, but Mike Bickle, he talked about how when the Lord gave him 24-7 uh, um, prayer and worship and the tabernacle of David, and it was all these prophetic words that were confirmed, and he didn't know what it was and was not really even interested in it. But the Lord grabbed his heart, and he put it up on his church wall, and people would come in, and they go, what is that? And, and he goes, I don't know. Well, we're going to do it, <laughs> and I'm not sure. So when, 19 years ago, just now, 19 years ago when they started 24-7 House of Prayer, 
people would come to him and go, oh, are you so excited your dream finally came true? And he would say to them with much love, this is not my dream. My dream is him. To know God and to be loved by God, that's my dream. That's my goal. That is my assignment from the Lord. And there's been times where the Lord has had to pull him out of, he was traveling with Wimber way back when, and crusades and miracles, and the Lord said, you need to go home. You don't cry over my word anymore. You need to go spend time with me. And he said, since that time, he says, I'm constantly checking my heart. God, what do I pray about most? Because I want mostly my prayers to be about you and about who you are. Just that correction of his heart. I don't want to be distracted with everything. He turns down invitations to speak all the time, constantly. So he can be in a tiny little prayer room, praying, speaking to God, because he knows that's what his heart has to be first and foremost, to be able to do his assignment. And we have assignments on our lives, but first and foremost, we have to connect with him. Exodus 33. Moses says to the Lord, now get this in perspective. Moses has seen the burning bush. He has seen the Red Sea parted. He has seen the pillar of fire, the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. He has seen some awesome things. We would just take one of those in our lifetime. I mean, he has seen awesome stuff. And then he goes to the Lord and he says to him, please show me your glory. So there's something that he wants more. He wants more. And the Lord said to him, I will make my goodness pass before you. I will make my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Name in the Bible denotes character or nature. The inner character of the person. Moses asked for something. I want to see your glory. I really believe that he was just like, I, I want to see you. I want to see who you are. And the Lord says, all right, I'm going to show you my goodness, and I'm going to proclaim my name. So um, 34 verse 6, he actually does this. God preaches a sermon on God, on himself. The, Moses asked him, show me you. And he says, I'm going to show you me. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. His name, he says, I'm going to show you my name. I'm going to proclaim my name to you. I'm good. I'm gracious. I'm long-suffering. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I want to see... I want to hear, I want to know rightly who you are. Song of Solomon 1.3. Because of, your, of the fragrance of your good ointment, or you could say perfume, this is his inner beauty right now. That's what he's talking about. But this is actually she, the maiden. She says, because of your inner beauty, because of your nature, because of your kindness, because of your love, because of your mercy, your name, it's like ointment poured forth. Think about that. Like um, Mary of Bethany, when she broke the alabaster jar uh, and, and anointed Jesus' feet, can you even imagine the fragrance? Mm -hmm. And that's what the maiden is talking about. She says, your ointment, your name is, is like ointment poured forth. It's why... The virgins love you. It's why, and virgins in, in Song of Solomon speaks of the immature believers. It's, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Yeah. 
It's his kindness. It's his nature that pulls our heart towards walking out in more of his kindness and his nature. It's his inner beauty. Ephesians 3, 18 through 19. May we be able to comprehend. Awesome prayer to pray for yourself, to pray for your people. May we be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the width, the length, the height, the depth? To know. To know. Get this. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That we may be filled with the fullness of God. How do we know something that passes knowledge? Experience it. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Right. It's not head. We're not talking about head here. Right. We're not talking about, okay, God is love. He loves That's me. Right. He forgives me. It's, I want to know. I want to experience. I want to hear the Father. I want to feel his smile on me. I want, I want to know. John 15, 26 says the helper comes. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father. And he comes to testify of me. Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, one of the Holy Spirit's jobs is actually to show us Jesus. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to show me the heart of the Father for me. Show me Jesus' love and compassion for me. Holy Spirit, I want to know this. We actually need to get really good, really, really good all the time. Every time the accuser comes, every time our own flesh rises up and goes, yeah, 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 but I don't really, I'm not really a filler, and I don't really, I know this, but I don't really, it's not really real to me. I don't know how to get over that. Stop. Stop agreeing with him. Go to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, reveal God's heart to me. Reveal how the Father feels about me. Reveal to me how the Father feels about that person show me yes. Romans 12 2 don't be conformed to this world be transformed by renewing our mind we dwell on the fact on purpose remember how we said behold on purpose on purpose I have verses that on purpose I focus on the goodness of the Lord that's what we're doing with our journals on purpose this is who you are the enemy wants to come and go, oh, yeah, but what about that? No, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. This is what I, I believe. This is who you are. Romans 5, 5, the love of God is actually poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. Yes. This is supernatural. This is not natural. It's not natural to believe that there is a being that created the whole universe and he even cares about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not natural. The natural thing is to go, you know, I'm just one of many and, you know, you know, he, no, he really likes me. Mm -hmm. yes. Like he pays attention to me. Mm -hmm. When I talk to him, I have his undivided attention. That's where we need to get, where we know the father's heart is so full of love for us. Mm -hmm. I have that Mike Bickle quote in the box. It might be on your second page. Not sure. The first <clears throat> okay. He says, contend for the truth that God loves you wholeheartedly. Wow. The enemy will lie. Yes. He'll say God is overlooking you. Mm -hmm. Refuse this. Declare. It is written, mm -hmm. Jesus loves me. Yes, that's right. It is written, Jesus loves me. Um. Mike Bickle will say this over and over, and I love the quote. He, he says, um, to be loved by God and love him in return, this is what makes me successful. Mm -hmm. This is what makes me successful. This is, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking of that, um, reading that, it is written, Jesus loves me. Um, about four years ago, 
I flew out to Kansas City and Christina picked me up at the airport and uh, her boyfriend had just broken up with her literally two hours before this. And she was super, super sad. She thought it was a good decision because he was struggling with some strongholds in his life and had come to her and said, hey, I, I got to get free from this stuff and we can't be together. And, but she was sad and she liked the guy. And um, that was on a Tuesday. And we talked quite a bit that week. And on that Friday, uh, we were in what they call a harp and bowl lab. And what it is, is, is they learn at the school, when she was at the school, um, they learn to do worship and prayer together, how to incorporate it. And uh, so they might do a song that you're singing that we all know. And then they would go into maybe some prophetic singing out verses or phrases or things like that. And there's this thing that they call an oracle. And an oracle would be like an extended, like maybe I would sing for two, three minutes. It wouldn't be really an invitation to the crowd, hey, let's sing this chorus along with me. But I'm just singing about God. And, um, you know, she was really struggling. And she gets up there and she's one of the singers. And um, they're singing about the goodness of God. You know, maybe we don't sing. Maybe we do just by ourselves but that we speak out the goodness of God. But these kids are trained. You sing about his goodness. You proclaim his goodness. And so they're singing some songs, and then all of a sudden she busts out into an oracle. Nobody in the room knows what's going on in her life. And she just starts singing about God redeeming and God delivering and God rescuing and that he's good and that he's kind. And she ends with this chorus, it is written, Jesus loves me. And she just sings it over and over and over and over again. And the whole room is joined in. They're all singing, it is written, Jesus loves me. So after this hour and a half set, they go out to debrief with their coach. Well, a new team comes in and, and he says to her, wow. Where did that come from? The boyfriend or... No, no, no. Her coach. Oh, her coach. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Her coach says, wow, where did that come from? Like, that's where we want to go. She says, well, I had a really disappointing thing that happened to me this week. And I decided to get free from it by singing out the truth. Bless her, Lord. Amen. Wow. This is what we are called to, ladies. Whether it's singing or just... Watch your mouth. Watch it. Our mouth wants to go to, oh, you have no idea. I had to do this, 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 and this. It was just so hard. Instead of, God's good. He is a faithful father. And I don't know what's going on, but I know he's good. Amen. I don't know what's going on right here, but I know he's kind. He has an answer. And he reaches down. He rescues us. But what she decided to do in that moment was actually chose. She chose life. Yeah. She chose yeah. to declare the truth about her father, even in the middle of disappointment and discouragement. Um, I love that song. It says, this is how we overcome. This is how, this is how we do it. We connect with the heart of the Father. Now, she, that wasn't the first time she had ever done that. She had been singing for, four, for two, three years on the goodness of God, on the verses. They're, they're told, go find those verses that you can sing out, that you can proclaim on purpose. And then in the middle of disappointment, that's what comes out. That's what comes out in our own lives. When we just have little issues and little disappointments, when we make a choice to not crab about it and complain about it and talk about it, but actually go, you know, this happened and I don't know what's going on, but, but I know God's good. And I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do in this Amen. situation yes. because he really likes me a lot. He and he does not leave his children hanging. Right. He does not leave his children as orphans. 
He takes care of us. He loves us. He nurtures us. Yeah. Um, the scripture that's been speaking to me really loudly this week is Psalm 42, one, where it talks about the deer panting for the water mm, yeah. and how our soul longs after that. Mm-hmm. And um, what I love about that is a long time ago, I, I, I think it was Pastor Joel actually did a teaching on the deer and how they would run to the river when they were being pursued. Hmm. And wow. They would jump into the center of the yeah. river, and the river would not only carry them away from that enemy, but it would cover their scent. Wow. So that wow, the that's enemy really good. Was really good. Not oh, hallelujah. Even find them. I like it. Yeah, that's And awesome. so that's the scripture I've been really just meditating on. It's just the river of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That we can yes. jump into that river of the yes. Holy Spirit and let him carry us out yeah. of. Yes. That place of fear, that place yes. of judgment, that yes. place of rebellion, that place of weakness, that place of whatever it yeah. is, where the enemy's like, yeah. 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 and telling you you're never going to measure up, you're never yep. going to, you're never going to succeed, or whatever it is, we can jump into the river of the Holy Spirit, yeah. and the That's Holy good. Spirit, what does He do? He points us to Jesus, who pointed mm-hmm. us to the heart of the Father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we get in touch with that. And that current of that life that's yes. in the river, that yes. we find by drinking, it, even drinking at the river. Yeah. And then when we jump in them, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it carries us away. There's so much power in the river of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So yeah. so there's this choice we have to make and that's that is the tricky part is making the choice. That's when we call upon the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me choose right. It strengthen me, empower me. But it is our choice to go I'm running to the river. I am not going to run around in circles trying to figure this out, trying to make it okay, trying to solve it. I come to you, Father. I don't know your plan, but I like your plan. It's a really good plan. Good. It's a really good plan. David, David through the Psalms, uh, David cracks me up because one minute he's like, woe is me, and they're all around me, and, da, 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 da. and then he's like, but, you know, and uh, he's real. He's a real guy. But who was he talking and, to when he said that? Hmm. Who was he talking to? Was he talking to himself or was he talking to God? I think maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. That's where the revelation came. Where he finally. I, I hope that's that. true. And God yeah. That, that, <laughs> that would be good. So Psalms eighteen nineteen. I love this. He proclaims. He proclaims this. David proclaims this. He delivered me because he delighted in me. He delivered me because he delighted in me. That's like when I say he likes me a lot. That's what. He delights in his children. He delivered us because he delighted in us. Uh, he also is the one, Psalms 27, 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord. We talked about this. This is what I'm going to seek. I'm going to be with God. Right? I'm going to dwell in his temple. I'm going to be with God all my days. I'm going to behold his beauty on purpose. God, you're good. You're faithful. And I'm going to inquire in his temple. I'm going to talk to him. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Caitlin was sharing um, a, a thing that happened at Bible study. It didn't happen at Bible study. She was sharing it at Bible study that she had uh, like a series of unfortunate events. I mean, have you guys ever had those, like just one thing after another, after another? It's just like, ah! And it was, it was going to kind of ruin, um, it, it had the possibility of ruining a vacation that they had been planning for a long time. And she was looking forward to, and she had just gotten news from her husband and was walking in the church and upset. And a friend of hers was like, hey, how's it going? And she starts crying. You know, you're like, oh, you just hit me at the wrong time. One of those opportunities. And, and, um, this friend of hers said this to her. Uh, she said, um, Caitlin, remember who your father is and remember whose girl you are. Excellent. And when she said that, it's just like, oh, like, you know, just like, say, Lord, just take a moment. Remember who your father is. Remember whose girl you are. 
And when I, when I had written that down, I thought of um, Song, Song of Solomon, verse 1, uh, just part of the scripture. The maiden proclaims, she says, um, we will remember your love more than wine. We will remember your love more than wine. I know that sounds weird, but what, it, what it's saying is we're going to remember your love more than anything else. Nothing else gets first place to your love. We'll remember your love more than wine. Verse 2 she says, your love is better than wine. Mm-hmm. Your love's better than anything else. It, it trumps everything. But this thought of remembering, we remember, how do we remember? We remember with our mouth. That's good. Oh my gosh, that's good. It's how we remember. <laughs> that's good. We declare. We're in the middle of chaos. Like, Holy Spirit, help me. He brings a verse to us. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you that you are the glory and the lifter of my head. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you triumph over my enemies. I thank you, Father God, that I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation on my life. I thank you, Father God, that you are for me, not against me. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. This is who I am. And this is who you are to me. You are my daddy. I cry out, Abba, Father. You take my hand. You lead me well. I am remembering. I'm remembering who he said he is. And I'm remembering who he said I am. And I'm remembering what he said he did for me. Amen. We remember by proclaiming it. I mean, who got encouraged just by me saying those few things? I got encouraged. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that verse. That's a good one. I mean, it's just like we, we don't. This isn't an act. It doesn't just sound good. This is the stuff we do while we're cleaning the toilets, while we're pacing in the hall, while we're doing the dishes. We remember. We, we start, worry starts to come in, frustration starts to come in. Oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do about this? Oh, these people messed up this. I'm thinking about this house. These people messed up this. How, why, how do I know this person didn't mess it up? No, wait, wait, wait. I did not walk in a spirit of fear. I walk in confidence in you, Father. I am led by you and not by my flesh. We remember. We remind ourselves of his truth. Yeah. Um, someone told me a long time ago that if you want to learn something, teach it. Oh, <laughs> yay. Oh, they yeah. said we no, teach true. what we most need mm-hmm. to true. learn. And then mm-hmm. when you're saying that, I'm yeah. realizing that's what we're doing. We need to share these things we're, with our... It's not only that, we're also reteaching ourselves. Yes. Ourselves. Yes. That's yes. So said, put me in remembrance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and isn't it true that when we do things like that, I mean, I can say a verse that I've said my entire life, and it can come out of my mouth in that situation for that moment, and it has like this new life and this new meaning and this new anointing on it. Sandy, what were you going to share? I was thinking about the stones of remembrance. Oh, yeah. mm. And he commanded them to set up stones Stone. of yeah. remembrance yeah. so good. that every time they came by there, mm-hmm. they were to declare that to yeah. their children. They're to yeah. speak mm-hmm. that out. That's and it was cool. a command yeah. to speak that's cool. out what God that's had cool. done. And that's going to reinforce it for generations. I had this. I, I'm not a numbers person at all. I've never been. I think it's cool when numbers, like people are like, God gave me this. But I actually had that happen this last uh, six months. Um, I had the number 1111. I saw it on the clock all the time, like all the time, all the time, all the time. Like I'm like, like literally all the time, 1111. Somebody opened their, their phone at Bible study. I look over, 1111, talking to my dad. He has a little clock by his, his um, chair. Talking to him, I look down, 1111, like 1111, like 1111, like all the time. And I'm like, okay, God, what's up with 1111? And he's like, I'm going to do it again. I'm like, all right, amen. Yes, do it again. And then I look up Isaiah 1111. Why Isaiah? I don't know. I just thought Isaiah. It seems like a prophetic book, right? 1111. It's, I will stretch out my hand again. 
and move upon the remnant. I'm like, oh, yeah, you are. Thank you, Father. So every time, every time I see 11-11, guess what I do? Thank you, God, that you're moving again. Thank you, you're stretching out your hand again. I thank you. That's, it's a remembrance. I'm like, God, that's awesome. Could you do this more often? Like, I... I love it. It's like it's for a every ring. Number. Let's yeah, for every number. number. Let's have a sum that it means. <laughs> but it's actually, actually like in the middle, in the middle of like chaos one day, I look at this 11 11. I'm like, oh, come on. You know, and just like, you know, I had to like adjust. Okay, yeah. Again, Lord, do it again. Move again. Move again. Move. Reach out your hand again. Okay, I want to get to this part because I do want to do something. Um, in our last half hour of class. Um, is this so good? Is it just good to just like, ooh, he's good. Revelations 1. <clears throat> I don't teach out of Revelations much, but I got two, two portions of verses out of Revelations today. Revelations 1, 4 through 6. <laughs> Get this picture. John has been translated to heaven he's having a vision is that how you say it of himself in heaven i don't know if he's in didn't he even say i don't know if i'm in my body or out of my body maybe he was translated maybe it was a vision okay that's why i'm confused he was confused he didn't know but he was like in he was like in heaven okay and he says um to the seven churches which are in asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Mm -hmm. So John's writing this from God to the church. He's writing this down from God to the church. And from the seven spirits that are before his throne. Mm -hmm. That's um, the Holy Spirit's manifest activity is what that represents. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that there were seven spirits and there were seven churches. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's tied together or not. And from Jesus Christ. So this is, he, he's writing this letter, you, y'all listen to this, he's writing this letter from God, from the Holy Spirit, and from Jesus. That's who this is from. Oh, and this is so sweet. He says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. What Jesus says is always true. Amen. What Jesus says is always true. I, I don't care if our circumstances look otherwise. What he says is always true. The firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the king of the earth. He just laid this out and then he says, to him who loved us and washed us of our sins in his blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and father. To him be the glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. I just love that. He, he, he just makes this huge picture of God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And he loves us. Mm -hmm. And he washed us in his blood. Mm -hmm. And he calls us kings and priests. Mm -hmm. He calls us in right standing with the Father. He calls us into a place where we have authority. And we, what we say, when, we, when what we say lines up with him, man, it has authority. It goes forth. Let's go into Revelations 1. 18 or 12 through 18. Okay, later on in that same chapter. <laughs> okay, get this, gals. This is awesome. I love this. This is real. Like, this really happened. Like, this really happened. Then I turned, speaking of John, to see the voice that spoke to me. And having turned, I saw seven gold lampstands in the midst of the seven lampstands. One, like the Son of Man. The seven lampstands are supposed to be representing the church. Of course, the Son of Man is Jesus. He's clothed with a garment down to his feet and gird on his chest with a golden band. He's dressed as a priest is what he is. His head and hair were like wool, as white as snow. It represents his purity. His eyes like a flame of fire which is burning desire for his church. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Um, my son was in Australia. I didn't even think of this until right now. And uh, he went to Australia to be part of uh, Youth with a Mission. 
and he was with um, some other YWAMers, and they were out evangelizing, and they came across a Muslim. They were talking to the Muslim, just really quick, this story, and, and the Muslim was drunk and not a very good Muslim and didn't really want to... <laughs> Didn't really want to talk about Jesus. And one of the, one of the YWAMers said to him, um, Jesus is going to reveal himself to you today. And as he says that, one of the other guys says, look. And there's this huge rugby stadium. And they see Jesus standing on the stadium. And it's awesome. They see Jesus. They fall to their, their, all of them did. They fall to their knees. And then Jesus starts walking across. We got to see it when we were in Australia. I've always told the story like this, but Josh said, no, it was like that, Mom. <laughs> Jesus was there, and he walked across to there. And then pointed down at this park, and they went over the park, and the Lord ended up really ministering to him. But when he called me on the phone, and he was shaking and just uh, crying and telling me about this encounter with the Lord, I said, Josh, what did he look like? And he said he had white hair and his eyes were on fire. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And we think, oh man, was he mad? No, he has burning he desire is. for he his does. church. He loves us with unquenchable love. Like those are the things that need to come out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. You think God's mad at you? No, he loves you with unquenchable love. With unquenchable love. His feet were like fine brass. He's powerful. As if refined in a furnace. His voice is the sound of many waters. He calls to us. He has something to share, right? He had in his right hand the stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp sword. <clears throat> Two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. John is seeing all this. And then get this, listen, he says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Now, John explains Jesus in detail. But then he saw him. Like he had a revelation. He had a revelation. It wasn't just that he had hair that was wool and eyes of fire and this. And I saw him. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But his, he laid his hand on me and saying to me, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I am him who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and death. He saw him. He, yeah, right, exactly. He had walked the earth. He had walked the earth. Yeah. So he was veiled, but now John sees him with unveiled. With unveiled. That's gross. And this is actually what we talked about last week about the the shutter. Yeah. Exactly, about like the shudder when we're like looking at things through human understanding and we say, Holy Spirit, enlighten the eyes of my understanding. And he lifts that. And we get a glimpse on this side of eternity. It's just a glimpse compared to when we see him face to face. But it can be a big glimpse. It can be a big one. It can be like, Lord, I really want to see your heart. I really want to have your heart for this situation. I really want to see how you see me. I want to see your burning heart of love for me. Ooh, how about we pray that? Mm -hmm. Lord, I want to see your burning heart of love for me. I want to see it. I want to know it. Behold what manner of love. The Lord has appeared in Jeremiah 31, 3, one of my most favorite verses. He has appeared to me. Of old saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I draw you. Mm -hmm. no. He draws us with his loving kindness. Come here, come here, come here. I want to oh, sit at my feet. I want to tell you something. Come here. Isaiah 62, 4. Speaking to Israel. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. That was a curse. Your land shall no longer be termed desolate. 
That was a curse. I'm confused. I'm, I'm overlooked. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't hear the voice of the Lord like I should. I don't, we, we curse ourselves. We curse our relationship with him. He says, but no, you're going to be called Hepzibah and you're going to be called Beulah. And this is what those mean. Hetzibah means the Lord delights in you. Do you know how sweet those words are? He delights in us. And your land shall be called Mary. Married. Married to the Lord. He is our companion. He is our friend. Romans 8.15 For you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. It's this connection with the Lord, his heart. <coughs> we get these things in our mouth. We proclaim them. We declare them. You are good. Not only are you good, you're good to me. You are love. Not only do you love, you love me. You love me. We start worrying over our loved ones. We're like, oh, God, but you love them. You love them. The all-powerful one loves my kids. And he has good plans for them. And he, he's on it. He's moving. He's directing. He's changing. I have these really great ideas go through my mind that I think what that should look like and oh, wouldn't that mean neat and that would be great. And then the Lord reminds me, oh, 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 wait, I got a plan. And then I remind him, I like your plan better than mine. I, I say yes to your plan because your plan's good. And, and we remind ourselves his heart is good. He is good. He is kind. He is faithful. When I'm mean, he's nice. That's right. When I'm frustrated, he is at peace. He is. Prince of peace. When I am faithless, he is faithful. Yes. Yeah. His words are so sweet. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says that when you...